Belmont, Belmont, Belmont. They come in all shapes and sizes, really. Well, different shapes, at least. Uh, their giant build seems to pass down the family tree like a blessed whip. Am I right, boys? <laughs> But who is the strongest Belmont, is the question I asked today. Well, I mean, it's the title of the video, like, imagine you figured it out. But hey, I mean, it's a natural place to go, really. When a series is decorated with so many protagonists, you tend to wonder who would come out on top the most if you shoved them all in a room together. I'd say place your bets now, but spoiler alert, there isn't really a definitive answer due to the nature of the series, although I'll try my best and give the most likely answers. Also, Belmonts only, okay? All of these fucks are banned! Now, it's only right if we start at the beginning with Leon. And this one's quite simple. The dude never even beat Dracula. And like, I get that it's only because he never got the chance. But the fact remains that he's one of, if not the only canonical Belmont to not kill Dracula. When it comes to battle experience, he definitely has an edge over a lot of the others, seeing as they tend to be much younger and generally more inexperienced in combat, seeing as they're mostly trained to fight Dracula and not much else really. While Leon was in the Crusades with Matthias for several years and has definitely got a lot under his belt, it's still realistically not enough to give him a title like Strongest Belmont, like, come on, the guy didn't even kill Dracula, which is probably the most consistent feat between all of these guys. Which actually brings us to Trevor, who while yes, technically killed Dracula, it was with the help of at least two people, depending on if you use the Netflix canon or not. Either way, the guy doesn't stand up greatly on his own, despite possibly being the most revered Belmont in the lore. I mean, even though he played the I was holding back card, he still lost to Hector in Curse of Darkness, which should show that they're at least on the same level. And in Curse of Darkness, it's heavily implied that if Dracula was at full power, Hector would have been squashed flat. And the only reason he was able to win was because the resurrection was incomplete or some shit. Either way, the comparison to Forge Masters paired with the heavy carry Alucard probably gave, considering he went on to take Dracula by himself, doesn't help our boy Trevor at all. You may be cool as fuck in the Netflix series, but you've lost here, buddy. I think a huge one to talk about would be Christopher Belmont, which is weird given how niche and irrelevant to the lore his story truly is. This is how he was one of the few Belmonts to actually defeat Dracula completely by himself, but not only was he able to beat Dracula, Dracula was actually so scared of Christopher, he basically hid from Christopher for over a decade until he possessed his son Soleil and began the events of Belmont's Revenge. While I don't think that's enough to give him the title of strongest, it's definitely a fucking huge big boy flex. If I'm being honest, if someone told me they saw Christopher as the strongest, I wouldn't even have a problem with it given how much of a chad he is. He's so ignored in the lore and features in such niche games, yet performs the best individually as a Belmont, and even as the only recorded Belmont to fight alongside their children. Like, can I get a goddamn round of applause for fucking Christopher as we move on to the next Belmont? Also, I guess you can say Soleil is the weakest Belmont? Whatever. Now, before we get into the top contenders, it's only right we talk about the most iconic Belmont, that being Simon Belmont, who actually has a decent amount of lore backing him. The main one being the fact that he basically had this Itachi sickness that was literally killing him the entirety of Simon's curse. And while yes, the fact that he was cursed in the first place shows that he had a struggle against Dracula, the amount of Belmonts who could actually defeat Dracula as full power by themselves is a lot smaller than you'd think. Simon was able to beat Camilla, one of Dracula's strongest allies, and if we go by the Netflix canon, is stronger than the Forge Masters easily, given the way she talks about Hector and Isaac like their children. His first fight against Dracula also shouldn't really apply as an anti-feat, given that it was featuring a much younger and more brash Simon, one who was thirsty to make a name for himself, like his ancestors before him, compared to the one in Simon's quest who is much older and clearly more powerful. This is as he went on to defeat Dracula by himself with his crippling curse, and while yes, the argument can be made that because Dracula was just reanimated, he might not have been at full power, it was still a complete resurrection, and I imagine the difference to be negligible, unlike other examples such as Hector, where Dracula being weaker is a big deal. Either way, I'd probably rank Simon right below Christopher, although if we're counting a hypothetical Simon right after the game with the curse lifted, he'd obviously be significantly stronger. Anyways, fuck these pussy Belmonts, it's time to get to the real men, the elder gods of power, who rule over- Just stay. Just stay? Just stay? Juice? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, uh, probably the physically weakest Belmont manages to be a top contender for one of the strongest Belmonts. Just say it's the only Belmont to look at his family tree and be like, Oh yeah, I am descended from the strongest magical bloodline in history. Hmm, that might be useful. Like, you always see other characters who are descendants of Bernardas, as if that's some special thing when literally Every main character is a descendant of Belnardes. Why is Jusse the first one to pick up a fucking book? But seriously, not only in the lore, but also just by raw game mechanics, Jusse's magical abilities are completely fucking broken. With varying elements and combinations with his different sub-weapons, you start to wonder if Jusse was ever actually trying throughout the run of Harmony of Dissonance. 
no Belmont matches his affinity to Magic, and it honestly gives him a much vaster arsenal compared to the rest, even if he does lack in feats. The reason he lacks in feats is due to the Dracula he fought being possibly the weakest out of any of the incarnations we see. Despite this, he still handled this easily by himself, and it doesn't really apply as an anti-feat, given that if we're going pound for pound, just his wide array of spells basically trump any other Belmont's toolkit. Which is why he ends up being one of the three main candidates for the strongest. Now for the second god of destruction! Who else could- Richter. You mean this fucking twink? Yeah, I feel like this one is kind of more feasible than just a to be fair. Richter is right next to Simon and Trevor as one of the most recognizable Belmonts, so it's only fair one of them gets selected to be a runner for strongest. Richter is actually kind of a weird one because his strongest state is due to aid from Maria, so it'd be understandable why people say that technically that doesn't count towards his strength specifically. However, I would like to say that Richter against Dracula was probably the strongest state a Belmont has ever been in, which is at least something to consider when talking about him. Ironically, one of Richter's best feats was his loss to Jonathan Morris, which sounds bad, but the fact that what was effectively a spirit mirror of Richter was able to give Jonathan Morris, of all people, a run for his money actually speaks more than anything else you could do, even Simon defeating Dracula single-handedly was cursed. Yes, that is how strong Jonathan Morris is. The man is basically the fucking god of vampire killing. He does not fuck around. Victor was also the first Belmont to use item crash, which is a nice middle ground to traditional Belmont sub weapons and the spell books of Juster. It at least adds to the theory that I'll get to later that Richter basically inherited the skills of Juster and managed to use it in a way that somebody more battle focused like him, rather than Juster who definitely invested much more of his time into magic, even if he was still adept with the vampire killer and sub weapons like the rest of his family. Either way, item crash automatically puts him above those who don't have it, in my eyes. This along with the spirit version of himself keeping up with Jonathan Morris, as well as his peak power surpassing anything we've ever seen, makes me comfortably call him a contender for Strongest Belmont. You may have lost the whip for Belmonts generations to come, but you did it in style, Richter. NOW FOR THE THIRD- I'm just gonna be straight with you, this time it's Julius. Julius Belmont probably has the most going for him, if I'm being honest, it's the closest to a definitive answer for the title of Strongest Belmont. His only anti-feat would probably be the fact that he had an entire war with Dracula, in which he was aided not only by human armies, but Alucard himself, along with Yoko Bernardes, and the assumption is many more mages. However, the circumstances of the war are not known, so we don't actually know if Julius ever fought Dracula more than once, if he had help or not fighting him, and so on. Point is, it's kind of baseless to say anything about the war, and it should basically be ignored for most of these kind of discussions. Now, the number one thing to understand when talking about Julius is the way the vampire killer actually works. In Portrait of Ruin, we actually find out that in order to unlock the whip's full potential, you must beat its previous user of said potential. This is when Jonathan defeats Richter, and while we don't know if this only has to be done because Jonathan isn't a Belmont, and that the whip is simply picky about who it picks up, only accepting descendants of Leon, or if this is a ritual all Belmonts must go under in order to use the whip properly. However, if the whip truly functions so that all users must go through this task, it means that each Belmont is stronger than the last, which, I mean, if you go through the list, it's entirely possible, although not definite. If this is true, however, it would mean Julius is definitely the strongest Belmont, as it means he would have had to defeat its current previous user at the time, who was Jonathan fucking Morris, who if I haven't mentioned yet, is an ABSOLUTE GOD! Ignoring that argument though, the fact that Julius was trained by Jonathan himself is just enough for me to give him the title. Like, Jonathan is seriously that big of a deal, where being his student and not necessarily surpassing him puts him on a different level to most other characters. Along with this, Julius has access to item crash, which gives him an edge against the majority of other Belmonts, as well as another huge feat, losing to Soma. I know, once again, it doesn't sound impressive, but Castlevania is weird like that, where characters losing can actually mean they're stronger than you thought. This is as it was stated when they fought that Julius actually held back because he sensed the good in Soma, meaning that Julius should at least be relative to fucking Soma Cruz of all people, who should be reasonably stronger than Dracula by a milestone given how many monster souls he's absorbed on top of holding Dracula's own spirit. For reference, Soma was literally able to destroy an entire dimension of chaos by himself after defeating someone with nigh Dracula level powers casually, and this is the guy Julius is looking at and going, nah, you know what, I think I'll go easy on him. Julius is seriously no fucking joke, and him being one of the oldest Belmonts we see only helps more to the idea that he has the most battle experience along with his raw power and affinity to magic. End of the day, fucking respect Julius because he is no joke! Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this isn't exactly like a Castlevania channel, so I doubt I'd do another one of these again unless you really want me to. If you do have your own opinion on, you know, the Belmonts, I'd love to hear it in the comments though. Uh, same if you have any ideas for videos you might want me to repeat. Uh, Anyway, end of video.